Hey everyone, welcome to the third video for section 7.6. In this video, we're just going to hit some examples of solving these systems with complex eigenvalues. So we'll do the whole derivation, going through how we get from the matrix itself to the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, and then sketching the phase portraits from there. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, example number one. I'm not going to write out the whole problem before, but the, the the statement is still the same. Find the general solution and the eigenvalues. I'm just going to put the matrix here, and then we'll go from there. So the general solution and phase portrait for the matrix minus 1, minus 2, 2, minus 1. So step 1 is find eigenvalues. So determinant minus 1, minus r, minus 2, 2, minus 1, minus r equals minus 1, minus r, minus 1, minus r, plus 4 which this is r squared plus 2r plus 1 plus 4, r squared plus 2r plus 5, which now we're going to throw in the quadratic formula, r equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 5 over 2, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2, which is going to be negative 1 plus or minus 2i when you do all the simplification there. So our eigenvalues are negative 1 plus or minus 2i. So we're in the complex eigenvalue case. So now what I can do is now I just want to pick one. I'm going to pick the plus 1, the positive root, the plus 1, plus 2i root. And then we're going to solve for the eigenvectors using that. So 2 eigenvector for negative 1 plus 2i. So I just want to plug in. So I had negative 1 minus r minus 1 plus 2i minus 2, 2 and then minus 1 minus negative 1 plus 2i. x1, x2 equals 0. So I can see right away, minus 1, minus 1 cancel, minus 1, minus 1 cancel. And I end up with the matrix negative 2i, negative 2, 2, negative 2i, x1, x2 equals 0, which right out to negative 2i x1 minus 2x2 equals 0, and 2x1 minus 2i x2 equals 0. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, if I multiply this bottom equation by i, I get 2i x1 plus 2x2 equals 0, which is the negative of the first equation. So this guy is again redundant. Even though it may not look like it at first because it's complex valued, it's still a redundant equation when we're allowed to use complex numbers to multiply things by. So this here tells me that minus 2i x1 equals 2x2, and that's the other side. So if I pick x1 to be 1, then x2 is i, negative i. So what I get is 1 minus i is an eigenvector with eigenvalue negative 1 plus 2i. So now what I want to do is I want to take this information and turn it into two independent solutions by getting the real and imaginary parts of the respective solutions. So ideally, if I could use complex numbers, my solution would look like this. I would have an x of t equals 1 minus i e to the minus 1 plus 2i t solve my problem. But I want real valued solutions, so I need to split this into its real and imaginary parts. So this is 1 minus i e to the negative t cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t. And so e to the minus t times, and I'm going to distribute this inside and expand it out right away, cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t minus i cosine of 2t plus sine of 2t, after I multiply this by minus i on the bottom, and then I can split this. e to the minus t times cosine of 2t sine of 2t plus e to the minus t i sine of 2t negative cosine of 2t. So this here becomes my u this here becomes my v, and I get a general solution to be x of t equals c1 e to the minus t cosine of 2t sine of 2t plus c2 e to the minus t 
sine of 2t, negative cosine of 2t. So now let's draw our face portrait for this one. So if I look at my first solution here, well, first of all, I notice all curves are going into zero. All curves go into zero as t goes to infinity. And that becomes from the fact that I have an e to the minus t here and e to the minus t here. So if we look at my first solution at zero, so u of zero is one times one zero and u of pi over four is going to be e to the minus pi over four zero one. So it's going to start here and it's going to go up to zero one and then kind of do one of those numbers and then it's going to do this out the other side. If I look at my second solution v of 0 is going to be 0 minus 1 and v of pi over 4 is going to be e to the minus pi over 4 times 1 0. So it's going to start here and go in this way and then do that on the other direction. And the curves are not going out like I drew wrong on the other one. These curves are going in towards 0 because of the e to the minus t terms up front. And if you want, you fill in other curves to your solution. So there's the face portrait for this guy. This guy is what's called a spiral sink because it spirals and everything goes in towards the center. Now for the second example. All right, so the measure we want for this one is 1 minus 5, 1 minus 1. Good. So step one is look for eigenvalues. Determine it of 1 minus r minus 5, 1 minus 1 minus r equals 1 minus r, negative 1 minus r plus 5. This turns into a negative 1 plus r squared plus 5. So r squared plus 4, which means our roots, our eigenvalues are plus or minus 2i. r squared equals 4, r squared equals negative 4, r equals plus or minus 2i. So now let's plug that in and see what we get for eigenvectors. 1 minus 2i minus 5, 1 minus 1 minus 2i, x1, x2 equals 0, which turns into 1 minus 2i x1 minus 5x2 equals 0, and then x1 minus 1 plus 2i x2 equals 0. Now this is one of those ones that doesn't really look like they're redundant, but if you work out what 1 minus 2i 1 plus 2i is, it turns out this is 5. So if I multiply the bottom equation by 1 minus 2i, I'm going to copy the first one. So that means these are in fact redundant, and I can just look at the second equation, which tells me that x1 equals 1 plus 2i x2, so x2 equals 1, x1 equals 1 plus 2i, so 1 plus 2i1 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 2i. So now I want to split things into real and imagined parts again because we're going to get x of t equals 1 plus 2i1 e to the 2i t as our solution that we then need to split into real imaginary parts. So this is 1 plus 2i1 cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t, which is 1 plus 2i cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t. And I can foil out the top part to get this. And I can split this into real imaginary parts. And again, this then gives me my u. This gives me my v. And then my general solution is x of t is c1 times u plus c2 times v. And now we can try to draw this again. So, um, so the one weird thing about this one that might stand out to you is that there's no exponential term. 
So the terms are neither going towards zero or away from zero. And this is why I've been so much emphasizing the words asymptotically stable. This is called a stable critical point because nothing's moving in or out. In particular, this is called the center because everything it turns gonna, is going to oscillate around it. So if I try to draw this solution, if I look at u of 0, I get 1, 1. And u of pi over 4, I get minus 2, 0. So 1, 1 over to minus 2, 0. And it turns out, since things aren't going away from 0 or not, I'm just going to end up looping back around and hitting back where it was before. I know I'm going around in that direction. Now if I try to draw this one, what it turns out I get is I'm actually going to be on the same curve. V of 0 is 2, 0. And V of pi over 4 is 1, 1. So that actually starts here and goes this way. So they're on the same curve. And then if I want to fill in other curves, I just get ellipses that are inside here or outside. And if you wanted, you could prove that that was an ellipse. Um, but that's a little trickier to actually do, but you could show that you actually the, these curves trace out ellipses. So that's the phase portion for that one, and that's what's called a stable center. So for complex eigenvalues, you either have spiral sources, spiral sinks, or stable centers, depending on if your exponential term is positive, negative, or zero. All right, so there's the examples. Um, hopefully that makes things make more sense, sort of elucidates what's going on and how you do all these problems. If you have questions, please let me know. We'll talk about this a lot in class tomorrow anyway. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.